Hey YouTube, I'm getting a lot of questions about um, uh, firearms and vehicles. Uh, some people say that uh, obviously when you're carrying concealed and you have a handgun uh, that uh, you don't feel like that's enough. And if in fact uh, you feel like that you're underpowered and of course we all know that your handgun is just the, the method and tool to fight you to a long arm, be it a shotgun or rifle. And so um, depending on whatever long arm you pick, and I'm not going to get into that whole debate right here, uh, we've already talked about what, you know, especially what I feel about what is the, the best long arm. But uh, I think it is a good idea to have a long arm uh, and uh, probably some type of vest system with uh, uh, pouches so you can have various resources on that vest system. Uh, be it extra ammunition, uh, magazines, uh, be it uh, a trauma kit, a flashlight, knife, uh, and so forth. Whatever is your needs, uh, that fits your needs and meet your needs. Now in terms of your long arm, you definitely need to have a means to secure it. You just don't want to throw it in the back seat and go on your merry, you know, merry way to Walmart and then you get out of Walmart and you come back and your car was broken into uh, and your uh, $1,000 AR-15 is now gone. Uh, you need to have it secured pretty securely, actually. I mean, it needs to, so whatever it is that you have uh, the, the, to secure, it should be bolted down in multiple places or even welded uh, to the frame of your car, if possible. Uh, and so um, I would highly recommend at least... Uh, uh, you know, I mean, it depends on how much money you have, but uh, 10 to 12 gauge uh, steel is a minimum uh, to protect your firearm. Uh, some people would go a lot lighter between 14 and 20 gauge uh, in terms of the steel for the container for your long arm. I think that's a little bit too thin. In my, in, in my opinion, it's actually way too thin. I think uh, between 10 to 12 gauge is kind of like the lightest that I would personally go. And so with that, though, I just wanted to say that I think it is a good idea uh, that you are you guys are correct. They have been talking to me and I just wanted to reinforce that. Um, and, and this is also I've been getting these questions, the same question really from people in my local community. And so so this is also to address their questions because there's so many. And sometimes I don't get a chance when I'm with one on one uh, to really address all this. So, uh, so in, a, in, a, in a, you know, in a kind of a, a roundabout way, let's just get to the nitty gritty. And uh, let's say that you do need it. I'd have at least uh, two to six different uh, spare magazines uh, full with ammunition secured. Uh, but when you leave your vehicle, when you come home, you take it out. Uh, you don't want to keep your weapons in your car overnight. Uh, you just don't want to do that. Uh, it's not only just a safety thing, someone steals your car, uh, but uh, it's also an issue that... Um, heat and humidity, uh, just various elemental things uh, can, can wear and tear on your, on your weapon system. And so uh, you'd also want to be able to secure even better in your home than in your vehicle. So it's even that much more safer for the most part. Plus you'd have access to it and if you needed an extra weapon system, you'd have it. Now in terms of, um, some people say, okay, so you have your sidearm that's concealed that you can fight your way back to your vehicle to get your long arm to finish the fight or to at least uh, repel them until you get reinforcements by police or friends or maybe you can just, you know, egress from there. Um, that could be true. Uh, but your long arm though is going to be uh, something, uh, you know, preferably that is somewhat compact. Now you may not have a very compact vehicle, you know, you might be, for all I know, drive a, a, a freaking uh, a bus or a, a large van, you know, I mean, a full, full-size van. Maybe you have a, a dually, you know, super cab, you know, pickup truck. I don't know. But uh, so you may have lots of room. So you might be saying, well, I don't really have to have a compact uh, weapon system. Uh, you might have a full loadout bag and everything. You might have armor and everything. Uh, well, that's cool. And that, that's really awesome. If you can do that, you should if you really can. But what I'm talking about is, though, in terms of being a, a compact, uh, it's, it's going to be because you may have to use it while you're driving or maybe in the front cab of the vehicle where there might not be as much room as in other parts of the vehicle. So uh, you kind of have to think in different ways that, okay, uh, for me personally, I think something with a collapsible stock uh, is good to go. I don't know if I would go with a carbine personally, unless you were just extremely recoil sensitive uh, and or that's all you had and you just couldn't buy another system and that's what you had to begin with, uh, then you just use what you have. But in terms of uh, calibers and stuff, I think that you probably wouldn't want something that's a super large caliber because you want uh, to be able to put a lot of shots in a short amount of time and have a lot less uh, muzzle flip and controllability. So once again, uh, not to insert all my personal opinions, but just based on facts, uh, the 5.56 uh, and the 7.62 by 39 are probably going to be in that range. 
of calibers to look at for just obvious reasons because they work and so that's what I would look at and uh, and you'd probably want to have maybe compact versions of that uh, maybe not full length barrels uh, you probably want to have less accessories on the, the foregrip you don't want you know five different things lights and lasers and all this stuff you may have want to have like a real low profile light I'd still say get a light and you might still want to have some type of uh, minimal type of sling uh, and maybe even a, a real low key like uh, sighting system maybe a red dot like a low key one um, but besides that, though, you don't need probably the lasers and all these extra hand guards and things um, unless they're just real low key. And Magpul does have a couple low key ones. Uh, so there could be some things on there, but I just wouldn't go crazy, you know, and I would be real careful on the magazines, too. I'd have at least a couple options, you know, I have at least a few 20 rounders uh, magazines uh, uh, for your AR, if that's what you picked. Uh, and, of course, uh, your standard 30 round so in, depending on your situation, if you had to go prone or if you were in a vehicle, the 20 round, as we talked about, is going to be much more adaptable. Adaptable. So uh, this is just some thoughts here. Just hopefully that clears the air. And uh, and so uh, so basically, uh, that's what I would do. I'd have it accessible. Now the next question, and I think this is going to kind of close out this conversation, is where do you store this weapon? Uh, well, it really does depend on what kind of vehicle you have. If you don't have a trunk. And maybe it's just a truck, for example, and you got, a, you know, like a crew cab or something, probably in the back of the crew cab or somewhere, you know, uh, some people have these very deep and large consoles and you can literally put a long arm in there if you kind of uh, do some slight modifications to the console. I mean, I don't know. Some people don't even like to put them into in a box or like a, a gun safe for a vehicle. They literally just have them bolted. Uh, through like a trigger a lock system, uh, a stock, you know, like for the, for the rifle stock, a clamp. There's different kinds out there. Uh, and some of it's just push button access. Um, and some of them uses keys and some of them are, are just like a combination. There's all kinds. I mean, you know, if you've looked into this at all, you know what I'm talking about. Some of those are very expensive. Some of them are just very custom. And some of them are, are you can just buy just for your vehicle. You can put in your vehicle and it'll give you a custom console, you know, to replace your old one. And so these things can be kind of up there. Uh, so for a lot of people, these are going to be out of the question. Uh, and what I wouldn't do is just have a simple cable lock, uh, you know, wrapped around the trigger guard uh, and have a $2 padlock uh, uh, going under some kind of piece of metal under your chair and say, oh, it's secure. Uh, no. Uh, I mean, I have young, young kids that I know that have been able to pick locks uh, that were considered like middle and upper security grade. And so uh, you definitely don't want that. Uh, if you do happen to have, or have to have something tethered, God forbid, it's not the good. That's not really the best way to go about it. Uh, use security grade hardened chain, uh, the best you can afford, and get yourself locks that aren't going to be easily picked. Uh, in particular, uh, those who have unique keyways, uh, and I wouldn't get you know padlocks that have uh, uh, pins in there. I uh, would get something that have, uh, you know, the disc, uh, disc cylinders. And if you know what I mean, look it up. It's the, they're disc cylinders, and there's really no way to pick those. And so um, I'd get some of those, and uh, that would be infinitely more difficult to overcome. Uh, for one, you're not going to be able to pick them. Number two, the chain is going to take one heck of a, of, a, of a bolt cutter, and most bolt cutters won't be able to, to really handle a, a larger variety of these uh, security chains because that's what they're meant for, to resist bolt cutters. Now, if you, give them, if you give someone enough time, they can pretty much overcome anything. But if you're just like in the parking lot of Walmart and it's a smash and grab, there's not going to be any opportunity for them to have enough time to work on that. And so in some cases, it might just be easier for them to take the chair out of the vehicle, you know, unbolt the actual chair that this is wrapped around uh, and they won't have enough time to do all that. There's just no way. So, uh, so that's what I'm saying basically to you is that uh, find a system that works. I'd prefer if you had a strong box that was bolted or welded into uh, the vehicle. And in, in the trunk would be really awesome. Uh, and then maybe even have a secondary means while you're traveling to have the long arm maybe closer so it's within arm reach. That's up to you. Uh, depends on where you live and the laws. Some places you can't even have any of this when you're driving. Some places you can't have a loaded gun. I mean, it's just so crazy. You know, this is supposed to be America. And your right for self-defense is so limited in a lot of areas. You know, I was just watching a video recently about knife laws. And there's so many places now that you can only have uh, like a five-inch blade or some places even less. 
And most of these, of course, in uh, metropolitan areas with large population centers. Not that that should really even matter, but it's like you're you're so less free and less free over time. Like, like what you know? What's the rationale for that? I mean, what's wrong with having a six-inch blade versus a five-inch blade? Not that I carry blades that big, but maybe if I wanted to, why don't I have that freedom as a free person? Who 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 gets to who has the right to dictate how big my blade is? You know, it's just the stupidest crap. It's just like having a gun. I mean, are they going to get to the point of saying, well, you can carry, but you can't have over a nine millimeter because that's not allowed. Well, believe it or not, a lot of European co uh, countries, they don't allow anything into uh, that's into the military calibers. And that's why you see a lot of the times the largest that civilians can own is a 380 auto. And people don't know that. But that's why the 32 ACP and the, 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 you know, the 380 is so popular because that's the, that's the largest they can carry. You know, and so this is the sham about governments. They tried to be so, well, they say that they're trying to be so protective and it's for your own good, but they just take your right and freedom and abilities to protect you and your family away. And then we allow that. You know, if, if everybody thought my, my way, I'm, I would have had freaking, uh, I mean, it would have just been a, a, a horrendous outcry. I would have had massive uh, protest for months if I had to, to reclaim my rights back. Not that they ever would have taken it. They 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 took it by fiat. You know, whoever these people are, they, they go around uh, in the name of the people and say, well, you don't have a right anymore. We're taking these freedoms. I mean, that's not American. We're not built like that. I mean, this is so ridiculous. I mean, so eventually we're going to get down to, what, one-inch blades now? I mean, at the rate that we're going in 10 years, we'll have, we'll have areas that will either, either have totally outlawed knives, which I don't even know how you can do that, uh, or they'll be down to like, okay, you're allowed to have a one inch blade or a half an inch blade. I mean, how ridiculous. I mean, there is no trust there. How can you have a social contract, as we know it's already been broken between our government and the people, but they pretend that there's still this ongoing contract that we, the people, are supposed to be like, oh, you know, the, the, you, know you guys, the government said something, so we gotta, you know, all bow and worship your ass. You know, screw you. Screw you, the government. This is all tyranny. This is tyranny from the tops of the mountain. And uh, they're, they're just seeing what they can get away with. And amazingly so, there's almost no resistance. Because everybody's asleep. Everybody's in La La Land. Everybody's on YouTube watching uh, other people play video games. Yeah. And that's why the nation has fallen. And that we continue to go down and down in despair. And uh, so, we, you know, we are witnessing this, uh, this final episode of the collapse of America. And we're seeing other countries slot as well. So uh, another reason to be prepared. And, uh, and I want to thank uh, you know, the, the various people who had commented uh, just recently on the, uh, that particular video talking about uh, the survival tabs. It is true that there's a lot of bad stuff out there. And we, we do know about it. And, you know, it's, it's frustrating for me and for you, I would imagine, when you buy these things thinking that you're doing the right thing. You're just having maybe one more variation and one more means to help you get through an emergency. And you find out that the food that, that you got and you paid for your hard-earned cash is complete and utter shit. And it, it pisses me off. And it should piss you off too, you know. And that's why I'm very public about this. Whenever I find something that is completely not good for you and my friends here, I will freaking go ape shit and I will tell you about it. And if these manufacturers contact me, which they probably will, I've had some people uh, from other manufacturers actually try to contact me here and uh, have a few words. And I just say, hey, I am speaking the freaking truth. And if you don't like it, uh, then stop making crap products and make good products and I'll have nothing bad to say. And you won't have nothing to be fearful of. But when you put out crap products and you don't tell people that you're putting these poisons in your food, MSG and gluten and all this other bullshit, you better believe when I find out about it, I'm telling you. And, uh, and you'll be better for it. So you don't want your family to be caught up in, in these crosshairs of all this disinformation about... Um, uh, bad information in terms of what you should and shouldn't do or what you should and shouldn't have and uh, all this crap. So anyways, thanks guys for all your uh, input and uh, for helping the channel grow so fast. It's just unbelievable. Uh, I wanted to just say, hey, uh, just stay tuned. I got some crazy amount of videos coming. Lots of good content. 
And just remember, every day we have a theme, and uh, we're going to just keep on moving ahead. Uh, we're doing multiple videos a day. Uh, keep checking back every few hours on the channel if you can to see if there's if there's something else you want to learn. You know, skim through the titles. Sometimes the titles are not as inclusive as you may think. There's a lot more things in a video sometimes than just what the title says. So don't be afraid uh, to just kind of pop on a ch on that video. A lot of my videos aren't that long. Maybe this one is, but <laughs> a lot of them aren't that long, and they're doable. Just to sit down. If you're just chilling out and uh, most of the time my, my videos are more chill and not like this one It's kind of up and down. Uh, I try to be a little bit more calm now than I used to but some things just upset me especially when uh, Manufacturers try to take advantage of their customer and uh, this is definitely a no-go and so uh, you and I uh, We're going to we're going to do a lot of good things here in the future And uh, we're going to turn some things around by being aware and, and actually spreading this awareness of the things we can do to uh, better ourselves and our family and uh, I hope you all have a great afternoon or wherever time it is in your day. It's getting, getting kind of dark here That's why I have to go in uh, you guys take care